Hello again. Tonight we will be speaking about some interesting approach to the problem of the vibration of the single degree of freedom system. I mean we will be speaking about the phase plane analysis. It's a really different approach to the problem. I mean phase plane analysis because we will be trying to deal with the description of the vibration on something which will be called phase plane. In the moment we will see what is going on with that thing. Okay, generally if we are talking about the single degree of freedom system, any dynamic system can be described by approximately by such an equation. I mean here we have the inertia force due to the Newton's second law and minus F over X V which can be treated as the right hand side connected with the forces which act on the system. Okay, and in general case that function can depend on displacement, velocity and time. But it's a, a lot of cases, interesting cases, where that function does not depend on time. I mean, here we have only the dependency, the relationship between the displacement and the velocity. And then we are able to introduce such a thing. I mean, because the solution of that system, it will be some function of t. I mean, the x uh, dot, it will be v of t. If we will find the x of t, and if we will find the invert function which give us, let's say, some information, what is the t in the function of x, we will be able to put everything here and express the w, uh, the v, by such a formula. I mean by some function of x of t. And then it will be really easy to compute the acceleration, I mean the second derivative of the displacement, and the first uh, derivative of the velocity as the derivative of the composed function. And there will be the derivative of the external function. In that case, it will be dv over dx. And there will be also the derivative of the internal function, which is the x dot. And we know that due to that thing, x dot is a v. It means we will be able to eliminate the time for the process of the differentiation. I mean, we will be able to put such a thing here. I mean, it will be the mass times v times dv over dx. Here we have the inertia force expressed only by the displacement, and here we have f over x over v. Okay, and typically, like always, when we are dealing with the dynamic system, we are trying to uh, make the, um, the factor of the, the highest derivative free, it means that we will get approximately such a thing and with minus f x x v over m, such a thing. Okay, and for our analysis I will denote that function by the minus f of x of x v. It will be such a thing. I mean, I will put that f of, f of x v over mass, it's exactly equal f, I mean the small f of x v. Such a thing. And it means that the solution, it will be the line, or even better, the family of the line parametrized by some values, which will be given by the v and x. I mean, the solution, it will be some curve given by the parameters uh, due to the integration process uh, described by that plane. And that is why that plane and that approach uh, could be convenient to analyzing the dynamical systems. Okay, and what is interesting here? That function give us the slope, because it's a first derivative of that curves on that phase plane. And 
we can consider such an interesting situation. Because if I take the dv over dx, and if I divide it by v, I have such a situation. And we see if the v goes to 0, then that first derivative of our trajectories of the first plane, because sometimes that curves, I mean v of x, are called trajectories, uh, goes, that value goes to the infinity. It means that the slope of our function will be exactly equal 90 degrees. And generally, at that point, we can treat our solution, our trajectory as a function. But if we assume that simultaneously our function f of x v, f of x v, will be also zero, we are able to find some solution. And only in that case, we will find a solution in the form of the point. And that is why that thing will be called a critical point. It will be called as a critical point. Sometimes it will be some set of the points. That is why I will, I will write down critical points. And that point show us where is some special place, some special places. And from the physical point of view, we will be interpreting that thing that it's a, let's say, equilibrium point. And what is the condition to find the critical point? It will be situation where the v will be exactly equal to zero, and the function f of x v, which is zero, will be zero. Because even if the v will go to the infinity but that function will be zero, then the whole fractional will be, the full, whole fraction will be zero. Okay, it means that here we have the condition for looking for the critical points. I mean, we have to take the right hand side of our equation and then we have to solve it due to the unknown parameter. Let's say I will denote it better, I mean it will be x critical. Okay. Let's consider the simple example of the pendulum. Okay, it will be such a thing. I mean, here we have the supported line with the mass at the end. It could be described by the angle of the rotation phi, and we know from the general mechanics, then the equation of motion will be as follows. I mean, there will be the mass moment of inertia of that mass about the point of the fixation times angular, vel uh, angular uh, acceleration of our case. And right hand side can be treated as a, as a moment which acts on the system. And in our case, it will be, um, it will be mass times L times G, because everything is given in the gravity force, and there will be also the function sine phi, which give us the tangential component of the gravity force, which is here, because only the tangential component give us the give us the, he will have the mg, and that part which give us the motion will be mg times sine phi, of course with the minus, because it will be the restoring force. Okay, we are able to divide everything by ml squared to make the factor of the highest derivative 1, and as a result we have the minus g over l times sine phi. Okay, and firstly, we can find the critical points. Easy thing, because we remember that we have to take the right hand side and compare it with zero. I mean, minus g over l times sine phi equals zero, and it is the condition for the critical points. From that place, we see that here we have the critical points equals 0 plus minus k pi. And we see that the equilibrium point is for the 0 
for 180 degrees, for 360 degrees, and so on and so on. It means that we have the two types of the equilibrium points, the two types of the critical points. There will be the points about similar to zero, and there will we see the stable vibration because it's visible that pendulum will act like that. Second thing, there will be the vibration about, vibration, let's say vibration, about the point equals 180 degrees. And in the moment we will see that the dynamics of that thing will be different. Because the equation which describes the phase uh, plane curves, I mean the trajectories, traje trajectories will be different. Okay, second step, let's find the solution. It's easy thing because if we have such an equation, I mean phi double dot, phi double dot minus g over l sine phi, we are able, like last time, introduce that the omega is phi dot, then omega dot, it's a d omega over d phi times phi dot, phi dot, but due to that condition it will be omega times d omega over d phi and we are able to put it here I mean here we have the d omega times d omega d phi equals minus g over l sine phi okay and now we are able to integrate that formula okay uh, by the method of the separated uh, variable uh, sh we should treat that thing as a fraction and then we are able in formal way write such a thing okay we are able to multiply the whole expression by that uh, by that differential and here we have such a thing. Okay, and now we are able to, oh, I mean, we have to take the product with the phi. In that case, we have to integrate both sides. And as a result, we have the omega square over 2 due to the left hand side. And from that point of view, you have g over l minus with the integral of the sine, and it will be minus cosine. I mean, here we have the cosine and then the sign will be changed to the plus. Okay, and the C is a constant of the integration. And the last step, it will be, it will be approximation of the solution about the critical points. Okay, and we know that the cosine, cosine function about phi equals 0 and 2 pi and 4 pi and so on can be due to the Taylor extension, Taylor ser series extension can be uh, can be approximate but by such a function. It will be 1 minus 1 over 2 times phi square. If we are talking about the phi which will be odd numbers of the pi, it will be, for that thing, I mean the pi, 3 pi, and 5 pi, and more, then the cosine function, due to the Taylor series extension, will be given by such a formula. I mean, mm -hmm, okay, that thing is not especially visible, I will improve myself, here we have such, and, oh, sorry again. Okay, 5 pi and, and more. Okay, and we see that as a solution for the even numbers of the critical phi, here we have such a function. I mean, it will be omega square over 2 g over l, which can be treated as omega 0 square times. 1 minus 1 over 2 phi square plus c and as a result here we have such a function we know from the math course that that function 
it's an equation which describes the it describes the ellipse function, I mean the ellipses. If we take, it will be again for phi equals 0 to pi and so on. And for the even numbers of phi, we have the 1 pi again, 3 pi and more. We have the function with different sign. I mean it would be such a thing, omega 0 square 1 plus 1 over 2 phi square plus c and as a result we have that it will be omega square over 2 minus omega 0 square phi square over 2 equals omega 0 square plus c. And we know that that formula, that equation, uh, describes the hyperbola on the phase plane. Okay? It means that as a result, we have such a phase plane diagram. I mean, it's a phi, it's a omega, and about the zero point, here we have ellipses, about the pi minus pi, 3 pi, and for the bigger numbers, minus 3 pi. Oh, I will put also the stable points, 2 pi minus 2 pi, of course. Here we have such and things, okay? I mean, here we have again ellipses because it will be given by that solution. And about that point, there will be hyperbolas as a solution. I mean, it looks like that approximately in that area. In that area, it's similar to our ellipse. I mean, the outer ellipse. And such a thing here. Okay, and if we are talking about that area, also we have such similar phase plane description. Okay, as you see, using that approach, that approach of the phase plane analysis, we are able to analyze the vibration on the phase plane analysis. And we see that depend on the type of the equilibrium point, the curves which describes the trajectories are different. Okay, thank you for your attention. See you next time.